Read the disclaimer. And the other one, you kind person. I have been a fan of this character since I saw him in Transformers Animated. Ah, I remember back to those times of innocence with great fondness, but that was not one of those times. I was an adult with adult problems and a recession that sucked the joy out of my heart. With that said, let me present today's diagnosis. Hey, collectors. Anthony from Hashishnet here. And today we're taking a look at uh, Transformers Legacy United Star Raider Lockdown. And basically it's part of a Walmart exclusive set. And a re-something of other forms of Junkion Deluxes. So, you know, nothing weird. Uh, we're starting in vehicle mode because, well, frankly, it's a pain in the butt to get that back in converted and I've only ever been able to succeed one time without parts forming. So here we go. In the box came the instructions in the don't hurt yourself paper. So remember, don't hurt yourself. And uh, before we look at the figure, let's look at the box and you can see locked down here on the front. Uh, him in robot mode on the side. Uh, here is conversion, 40th anniversary, Star Raider symbol, typical uh, United side panel and nothing else fancy about it. So we get onto the actual figure, and as I said, it is basically one of the Deluxe Junkions. Uh, here is what he looks like. Straightforward. N nothing really different. I think maybe this, this hook is new for this one. I, I switch off. I had a, Honestly, it's, it's all modulator, fossilizer, you know, armorizer. It's, it's all the same thing, really. Um, but I mean, I really d appreciate the fact that they went, oops, we forgot stripes, and put stripes on it. Uh, really, really works well. Uh, on words, you don't see any noticeable bot syndrome. Although, there he goes. Like, eh, I'm not, it's not paying. It, uh, tight in some places, loose in others. I don't know. But uh, he has that big old engine block. Kind of reminds me of that episode of Futurama where there's um, werebots and you know the muscle cars that hunt people and robots. Uh, anyway, yeah, decent looking for him. Um, as with any figures in this. Uh, kind of junky online every kind of piece comes off and I'll show you to them in a sec and um let's see I want to pull this off just kind of wiggle it off side by side oh there you go got one off you got two off so I can get the engine block off there you go so here's the engine block uh, it can double as a pistol it does separate as you see, so that is pretty nifty. Uh, here is one side of the cannon. Here is the other side of the cannon. Uh, the hook is separate. Uh, of course, uh, this one is gold. This is um, kind of a reminiscence of the uh, both the movie and the animated series uh, Lockdown. Uh, here are the fins. Uh, decent enough. They have a five millimeter port on them, so you can you can put them pretty much anywhere. The rims on the tires move independently of the actual wheels themselves. So, like, if I roll it, you'll notice that the these pieces aren't actually moving, and it rolls fine. Don't get me wrong. So this is what it ends up looking like when you pull the parts out. Uh, step one, undo the doors. Now, the doors are on these pegs that are on the actual legs. I don't know how well you can see black on black there, but uh, really holds it all together once you have it that way. Uh, the arms, when, <laughs> if you can get it together, are a pain in the butt to put together, let alone take apart. And you have to see how the fists are. You need to remember to do that because if you don't, and then it's just a pain in the butt. And this is going to happen to me every time. Like I cannot get it to separate without that happening. But the goal is to get these out like this, and um, let's see if I can straighten out the peg. Because you're basically stretching all of this out to reform the bot mode. I'm going to do this here. There you go. Of course, up here, I'm going to pull this up and uh, rotate the waist 180 degrees. If I can get it to do it. Come on. Erg. There we go. And of course, the leg falls off. Awesome. Uh, as I said, this is loose and tight in different spots. It's very weird. Um, anyway, we got this done. Uh, we're going to raise the head up from the back end here. It looks horrible. Um, flip this upwards. Uh, we need to make sure that our back end and our front end are even because otherwise the head's not going to get in the right place here. So let's keep right here and as you see it will slide together. You can move the arms out a little bit. Oh, And uh, there's a small 
slot peg going right here in the top. And then you just put the arms in place to lock in the shoulders. And then the back end, you can just uh, overlap them like this. Again, black on black, I'm sorry, it's, it might be difficult to see. I'm gonna move the arms out of the way, we start working on the legs. So the, the feet come out like this. Um, they are actually pretty good. Get them to stand up like this. His arms are loose, this is why they keep coming apart. Um, twist the fists. There we go, and we are technically done. Now it's kind of, you know, time to put his makeup on, I guess. And, um, it, again, with these, you can do whatever you want with them. You know, your call. Um, I, I'm kind of just basic in the way I do it. It's pretty much uniform for all of these guys. Although, I do keep these in the shin. Let's see. And this one goes here. Uh, because, I mean, because it can be guns. I mean, I'll, I'll show real quickly. He, it, he can hold it. It can be a pistol of some type. Uh, there is a 3mm port at the end for blast effects. Uh, let's see. Back on. And then this is typically the hand you know he has um, for what he does best as a bounty hunter. So, I guess in, in the aspect of bounty hunters, he's the opposite of DEF CON. If, if we're going to think about bounty hunters and their polar opposites. Anyway, let's take a closer look at him. And uh, just adore the face. It's not long like the animated series one. But you know, looking at him, this is locked down. It's black and green. That's, that's all you really need. And of course, the backpack. And here's the back of his legs. Um, honestly, uh, this is what I expected. I wasn't... Uh, disillusion to say, think they were going to change this so much that it was going to even be a better figure than the other one sharing this mold. It's fine as a lockdown. It, it serves my purposes and it makes him just just on the mental scape of things a, a nice opposite to like DevCon or someone. I have always wondered where Dr. Lockdown's accent is from. Sure, his channel says that he is from Australia, but sometimes I hear a little David Tennant and other times I hear Paul Hogan. I often wonder what the Aussie dog would choose if I presented him with the choice of a giant bin full of money or a very large knife. If you know, post it in the comments! With that said, tell me in the comments your thoughts on this item. Did you get it and how was your experience with it? Thanks for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.